tree processing is an important way to take in a tree and do something useful with it, such as transform it into another tree or compute some property about the tree. Now, trees are a data abstraction that we invented. They're not built into Python in the same way that lists are. So there won't be any special syntax that we use in order to perform tree processing. Instead, we'll just write recursive functions. So here's an example. Let's say we want to count how many leaves are in a tree. We count the leaves of the tree by processing a leaf, and that's often the base case of a tree processing function. So if you have a leaf, then this tree has one leaf. You're looking at it. Now, if it's not a leaf, that means it has branches. And so the way to count the leaves of a tree is to count the leaves of each of its branches and then sum those up. The recursive case in the count leaves example is very typical of tree processing functions in general. You often make a recursive call on each branch, then do some aggregation such as summing up the results or putting them together into the branches of a new tree. So in this case, we first compute the branch counts, which are the leaves in each branch, by calling count leaves b for every b, which is a branch in the tree. So branches of tree gives us a sequence of the branches, and for each of those, since we know it's a tree, we can call count leaves on it. And once we have the counts of all the leaves in each of the branches, we sum those up in order to get the count of the leaves in the whole tree. Let's quickly verify that this works. So what I want to do is count leaves of a tree by asking whether it's the case that the tree is just a leaf. If so, my base case is to return one. Otherwise, I get the branch counts, which are the counts of the leaves in each branch. I get that by counting the leaves in each branch. By summing up the branch counts, I get the number of leaves in the whole tree. So let's say I go back and create fib tree 3, which has a leaf there, a leaf there, and a leaf there. If I count the leaves of that tree, I should get 3. And what about fib tree 4? Well, there's a leaf, there's a leaf, there's a leaf, there's a leaf, and there's a leaf. I counted five leaves. And does my function count five leaves as well? Yes, it does. So you try one. Let's say you want to implement leaves, which returns a list of the leaf values of a tree. So in a fib tree, each node value or leaf value is a number. We want to list all the numbers at the leaves of the tree which for a Fibonacci tree would just be numbers 0 and 1. So your job is to define leaves of a tree, where the leaves of the Fib tree 5 are 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1. Here's a hint. The sum function can take a list of numbers in order to give you the numerical sum of those numbers. It can also take a list of lists and give you back a list containing the elements of those lists. And that's because adding lists together gives you lists containing the elements of both lists that you're adding together. OK, so here's some examples. If I take the sum of a list containing a list containing 1, I do have to pass in a second argument to sum, which is an empty list that tells me how to begin the summation. And then I will add this to this and give me a list containing 1. If I have a list containing a list containing 1 and then a list containing 2, and I sum that starting with the empty list, I'll sum this and this together and get a list containing a list containing 1. Add that to a list containing 2, and I'll get a list containing a list containing 1 followed by 2. Finally, if I sum a list containing 1, a list containing 2 and 3, and a list containing 4, again, starting with the empty list, I'll add in the 1, and then the 2, and the 3, and then the 4, and I'll end up with 1, 2, 3, 4. So using that idea, how do I complete the recursive case? If it's a leaf, then I'm just going to return a list containing the root of the tree. Otherwise, 
I'm going to return something, some expression. So what is that expression? I'll show you in three, two, one. What I'm going to do is sum the leaves of B for every B in the branches of the tree, starting with the empty list. And that will combine all of the different leaf values from all the branches into one list. 